the rush, isn't it, eh? Welcome to the workshop. I'm Steve Hay. This is day 28. Four weeks. I cannot believe it. I'm super impressed with myself. I think my wife's a bit concerned. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's all good. 28 days straight woodworking masterclass. Welcome to the workshop. I hope you're feeling well, enthusiastic, energetic and excited. Now, I don't know. Oh, good morning, Bob. No, you've already eaten, mate. Bob has emptied, <laughs> emptied the building. He could do that, you know. Here, go on, say hello to everybody. Go on, where are you going? There's no bed. You can't escape the press, mate. That's it. No, I'm totally unimpressed. Oh, there you go. Well, it's a table saw. Obviously, it's the next machine I'm going to be using because that is where he is lying in front of. Oh, it's uncanny how he can do that. It really is. Oh, dear, oh, dear. All right. Oh, listen, I've got no idea what I'm going to do today. There is one thing I want to try and do. Just have a little bit of fun and see if I can break my record and go under one minute. Good morning, Raymond. Oh, that was a good movie. I like that. Good morning, Vietnam. Oh, dearie dear. It's all go. I had, I had a very successful day yesterday. I was going to tidy up the workshop, but got part of the way there, but I had to do some camping repairs on my tent when I go out bush and get timber, which seems like a lifetime ago. Um, I've got my tent and I'll go out and it's one of those hoop tents that you just you put all these poles together and it creates an arch, holds the tent up and the way you go, well the last time it was raining we pulled it down, it's been sitting in the yard for ages and the hoops broke. So I had to get some uh, replacement rods and worst of all I had to thread elastic through it and you only get, for example, that much elastic, but the poles are three times as long, which means you tie it off at one end, through it through, and then you've got to uh, pull it out and extend it, which is all good. And I had about 14 poles all done, and I had the elastic here, and I turned around and let go of the elastic, and it shot back, and I had to re thread another six of them. Anyway, it's all good. I've actually erected the tent in the backyard, and I'm going to sweep it out when I finish here. Um, and wash it down and then pack it up for when I can go away next time. Oh, look at that. First, first injury of the day. Oh, it's real. <laughs> it's, it's live. It's all right, Bob will have it later. Where are we? Morning, Brian. Morning, Panda. Morning, Jeff. G'day, Devon. G'day, Mitch. Ah. Oh. Max, good, very morning to you. Did I answer? No, I didn't. I got your email out to answer, Max. I am sorry, I apologise. But no, just put a solid one on there. Mount it, doesn't matter. The only reason mine is removable is because I can utilise one shooting board um, for two jobs, basically. Max asked me a question yesterday. And then when I answered it, he got sidetracked by something. Oh, I don't know. Um, and it was, I, I make a, a, a shooting board similar to the one that uh, what's he, Paul Sellers makes, but not the same. Um, and it's got a 45 mitre removable bit and a 90 degree fence, so you can use it for both. And Max's question was, do you have to have that as a removable or can you make a 45 degree Shooting board. In fact, what I said, Max, was what you can do is actually have a shooting board with two fences at 45. So if you made a, what's that, equilateral triangle, as opposed to an isosceles, um, you can mount that and then you can use that for that angle and shoot with that angle. Well, there you go. So you don't have to do it. And anything I do, I'm telling you, is not the only way to do something. It's the way I'm thinking of doing it at the time, it's not even the way I always do things. We made this template yesterday, which I'm very happy with. I might put that on the frame of the um, gizmoid, the, the cabinet I'm making. I've got some box tops here I've got to finish off. Good morning, Trevor. There you go, I'd go down the list. 
Oh, no bed for Bob in the shed today. No, no, that's his house. That's his house shed. Uh, house shed. That's his house bed. And if I do have one in here, which I might, although I tell you what, I don't, oh yes I do, there's a hardware shop up the road, this is, I might do that, I think I've got another bed floating around, so I might do that and bring it down here and spoil him. Um, because, yeah, I don't know, I'd much prefer to lie on a mattress than a concrete floor, but there again, he doesn't have to lie here either, he's got a house up there, he's got another couple of sheds he can go to, he's got a lovely huge backyard, a couple of acres he can run around, so it's his choice. Ah, <sighs> these all start with a rush. I'm thinking 10 o'clock is a good start time. It's amazing. It, uh, it's a 10 to 12. Boss is happy with that too. <clears throat> you know, I saw George sneak in there. Where are you? Da, 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 bum. <whistles> G'day, Jared. How are you? Wolfie, good morning. Reginald, g'day, mate. How are you? Thanks for coming in. Michael, morning. Um, Trev, is that rooster from the movie Peter Rabbit, but instead of being amazed that the sun keeps coming up, so it's a fact that he is allowed to stream. Oh, well, you see, I've got a strategy there. If she doesn't let me stream, I'm going to annoy her. And she can go down the stream. Uh, <laughs> Did you bring Bob's bed down from the house? No, Wolfie, it's too big and cumbersome. And when I go up, he, he goes and sleeps on it there. But I do have another bed. I will organise it. Louise, good morning. Jeff spent the past couple of days restoring old cedar bench, which basically is resulting in... Re yeah, people wonder, I mean, you're just restoring it. How come it's cheaper to buy, buy a new one? Yes, well, it is. Because not only do we have to remake it, we have to pull it apart first. And then put some authenticity into it. Flick up a photo. We'll put a photo somewhere, Jeff. Love to see it. Good morning, Ian. G'day, James. G'day, Mike. Oh, well, good evening, Mike. All right. Uh, what I did yesterday, uh, those of you that were watching, I put a very slight bow in this shelf, if I can find a big enough bow shower. Oh, there, oh, there, up oh, in here. Oh, that's a big one. See, so it's got a, a bow in it. If we, we'll have a bow show. It's only a very slight one. There you go. And the reason I want that in there is because I didn't want this the same width as the top of the cabinet and the bottom of the cabinet. So when I close the doors, you've got a little bit of an air gap there. I could have just uh, cut it off flush. However, if I'd done that, it would have looked a bit horrible because... It's actually going to sit behind this frame. So if I had it, I don't know if we can get this shot. We'll try. We will try. Excuse me, Robert. I'm just moving all my camera gear over there so I can get a wide shot. There you go. So if I had just cut it off straight, when it came in here, you would have a gap behind this style here and this style here. Whereas by putting a bow in there, we're flush on these corners where the styles meet the shelf, but it's in so when you close the doors, you've got a little bit of an air gap behind there, which is just a feature, you don't have to do it. But I thought I would and we adjusted the, 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 the sliding dovetail so it actually slid in which I'm, I'm going to double check again today because the little critters move on you oh so let's just well we will see we will see where are we going there and there Whoops. 
You idiot, put it in the other way. Of course it won't fit that way. What is a knockometer? Oh, I've got to tell you, <laughs> when you're not streaming, you do build stuff a lot quicker. Okay, there we go. That's better. Knock it. Home. Nice and tightly. So that fits in there. Let me, let me, let me. I don't think we can because it's not going to fit. But then this is going to go over the front of there and then the doors are going to go on there. But what I was talking about is... When the door's shut, as that comes down and hits me on the head, firstly, I wouldn't be surprised, but secondly, I wouldn't be impressed. Okay, so you've got the door. This is just a you know personal thing. You've got the door butting up against there, and it's butting up against the middle, but then when you look on the shelf, you see they've got that, just that gap behind there, and it's on a gentle curve. So there you go. That's just a little thing you can put in. You don't have to put them in. I'm just building this by the seat of my pants, to tell you the truth. Oh. There we go. <laughs> so, I might do some more work on that frame in a little bit. I'll just put this oh, over here out of the way. Don't need it for the moment. And I had a thought about um, putting some glazing bars in, which I think might look nice. I wanted to go a bit fancy, but then what I was looking at, <laughs> he's given up. You want to go up the house, mate? Go on then. There you go. See you in a bit. Like the next three minutes. It's worse than a kid, he really is. Um... Yeah, the more I looked at the glazing bars I wanted to do, and even the, the carving I wanted to do, it's starting to look gothic, which I want to try and keep this uh, arts and crafty. And the, the whole idea of the arts and crafts, I mentioned the other day I uh, got a, another book that I bought, hopefully it might be here to, today or, or Monday, called... Arts and Craft Furniture, it's something rather something rather by Kevin Rondell, who is a uh, he's a furniture maker but specialises in arts and crafts furniture design. I've just for the moment I've forgotten whereabouts in the States he works, but does beautiful work. And uh, I did a workshop with him a few years ago. And he had his book there for sale, and I thought, nah, no, I don't really like arts and crafts. And now I'm starting to like it. It's a bit like shaker furniture. Oh, I didn't like shaker furniture, but, yeah, now I like shaker furniture too. So, oh, Prunella, I was wondering, my dear, if you were going to be coming in. I hope you're feeling well and things are starting to settle down for you. Oh, dear. See, I worry about me flock. Oh, I do. I used to call it checking on me chickens. I'd go around and see people and I was just checking on me chickens, make sure everyone's okay. Can't help myself. It's in the genes. Oh, what? Trevor, what a magnanimous gesture you just made. Randy, good day. To all, hope everyone's health and safety. I'll get back to you in a tick, Randy. Well done, Trev. I shall make sure to send a pic tomorrow. Oh, I'd appreciate that. It's a rocker bench. Okay, look forward to seeing that. Loaderized. Did I get it right? Loaderized. G'day, mate. Thanks for coming in. Now, give me, um, East, that's New York's on that side, isn't it? And then you got LA on the other side, if I'm correct. I'm, I'm hopeless at direction. I'll get lost to a phone box. I can't, sometimes I can't even find my way out of bed. 
That's how good I am with directions. G'day, Tempers Brewer, how are ya? Good evening to you. Um. Oh, mate, she loves the rocking chair. She loves it, yes, must admit. <laughs> yeah, it's Daddy Hans. Well, you can have a good morning, your royalness, or your royal muchness. Do you like that? Your royal muchness. I need some help from you guys. I need good Disney songs to listen to or I will go crazy. Recommendations. Oh, I love that. Um, is it Aladdin? Oh, I think, I think, I think. Yeah, Celine, Celine Dion does it. Um, something about dreams. Yeah, something about dreams. Well, what's that one? Someone will tell me. I love that song. Uh, have I said g'day, Wombat? I think I did. I don't know. G'day, Eric. How are you? Short. Oh, there you go. Later, I was on. I'm going to practice that. Yes. Got it. Yeah, your royal muchness. That's it. And that when she's fanging out on cake, she could be her royal munchiness. Okay, Randy, you asked what the difference was. And I'll show you. Um, question, what's the difference, or what's the different uses between for a round spoke shave and a flat um, sole spoke shave? If you're doing, if you're making a cabriole leg, you will use both. That, okay, we'll go to the common ones first. That's a record. I think that's a 51, is it? Number, uh, one. Okay, Stanley call that a 51. Record call it a, a 151. But the Stanley one's exactly the same, only it's orange and black. That is flat sole. It's got a flat sole. Here is a, a Stanley 52, which is exactly the same as a 51, except... It has a rounded sole. And the reason for the rounded sole is so you can get in to a curve like that. If you're using a flat sole, you can't get down to the bottom of the radius and you chatter. So that is for internal curves. The flat one is for external curves like that and also flat work. You set them up exactly the same. I prefer these ones here with adjusters. They do have some that you have to tap. Speaking of tapper ones, these are the H&T Gordon ones. The curve is definitely not as uh, accentuated as in these two. If you look there, see how curvy that one is compared to that. Whereas Terry's, it's a much, and I was sceptical at, at first, but no, that works absolutely just fine. But major difference between the two, have a look at the mouth opening on that. See, that's, uh, well, it's got to be three mil, eighths of an inch. That will still work. That will still work. The trick with these to stop them chattering is make sure that your cap iron is down nice and hard. Have a look at the mouth on the H&T Gordon. Oh, yeah, that's the difference. But, of course, there is a difference in price as well. And the other one Terry makes, which I have never seen before, is, I think he calls it a, a cigar spoke shave. It is very, very round. If you look at that profile and very, very small. And when I was first given one of these to try, I actually laughed at Terry. I said, oh, mate, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that. I use this 
more than anything else because when you're doing the, um, the, the toe, or not the toe, but the ankle of a cabriole leg, I haven't got one. Hang on, I might have one out here. Let me just have a, just have a bow peep and I'll see. Oh, well, there you go. Look at that. Ask and you shall receive. Oh, oh, oh. Crunch, bang. Uh, let me just see if I've got a, a clampus. A clampus firmus holdus. Oh. Okay, I won't do the whole thing. But. Let him. And we, we might even bring this one over here. I like, I like playing different cameras. And we go there and we'll go there. Okay. So for the toe, you would use, which one are we on? This round one. Gonna get into focus. I don't know if it's. Oh no, it's because it's focusing on what it's sitting on. There you go. Okay, so you use a round one, and that will get you. This isn't tuned, but it will get you in there. Whereas a flat one won't. You actually, you've got an air gap under there so you can't get that roundness. But with this little cigar one, you can just get in there and go to, as I said, they're not set at the moment, but you can really get in there and do some nice work. With the flat one, you come up here to the knee and you use a flat one for the knee, up until about here. Then you start getting round and then you can actually, well, you do use it. Use that flat down there, and then you actually cut the leg in the quadrants, and then you make it round. But when you come to the curved bits, that's when you need one of them suckers. And look, I used, I used these two for 10... 15, 20, nearly 20 years, I suppose. Not a drama. Uh, but then when I started using Terry's, well, I just haven't gone back because they are just so nice to use. And that small um, mouth just gives you the nicest little shaving coming out. So there you go. I hope that sorted it out for you, Randy. I'm not sure. You generally pick these up uh, 20, 20 bucks or something on, on eBay. I think brand new, they're only maybe $60 or $70 each, whereas I think Terry's are around $300, $350 each, something like that. But, and that brings me back to what I've said to those of you that don't know, Terry Gordon has kindly put up $300 gift voucher. And all you have to do is go online, send him an email, order one of his catalogues, Tell him you're watching Woodworking Masterclass and answer a simple question. And the question is, what does Terry make his Gigi planes out of? And those of you that think Gigi is a style of plane, I'll give you a clue. No, hang on. There we go. Here you go. Here's a, here's a little clue. That is a Gigi plane. That is a Boyaka plane. And what is the difference between the two? I hear you ask. That's made out of Gigi and that's made out of Boyaka. So, 
What does Terry make his Gigi planes out of? Send him an email, request a uh, catalogue, and I'm sure there's a few hundreds already gone out. And you, you can't lose because when you get one of his catalogues and you're, if you're locked up, it's just so nice to sit there and look and dream about lovely tools. Plus, Colin Clinton's got uh, his tools in there. This is some of Colin's stuff here, wherever it is. I don't think this is on the, this isn't on the, uh, for the $300 voucher job, but they're Colin Clinton's. Colin's the only, I think there might be someone else, I don't know, but Colin's squares are adjustable, so if you accidentally drop them, which you shouldn't, you can adjust it back to square. It's got screw balancing mechanisms on the inside. And marking gauges, this one's a cutting ga gauge. And the reason it's cutting gauge is because it's got a cutting blade in there, not just a marking blade. I prefer cutting gauges, but you can get whatever you like. So there we go. Oh. Boom, ba -doom. Um, now where have I go here? Do -do 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 -do. Oh. Is it a folly you dream, no? No, she, it wasn't a Disney one. She did uh, Celine Dion. She did it uh, for the Olympics. Was it the LA Olympics? Yeah. So, no, I'm sorry, Prunella, it wasn't a Disney one. Oh, but I tell you what, uh, was that? Oh. I think it might have been Aladdin. Um, Richard Marks? He did one. He was a bloke that did Hazard. But no, he, he did one in Richard Marks, I think, which is absolutely gorgeous. Love it. Into the unknown, whole new world chim chimney. <laughs> there you go. That's a good one too. I haven't seen the new remake. I don't know what it's like. How about... <laughs> Oh, there you go, later riser. Oh, I tell you, a little little trick, little trick when you're doing that is a lot of people they yeah, they they um, oil their threads on their F clamps or G clamps. Do not oil your threads. Oh, hang on, now let me let me get that right. Yeah, I don't oil my threads. Uh, no, it's this bit up here. They oil the, the ball in here because then it's nice and smooth. You really don't want that when you're holding the cabriole leg. You want that to lock. You don't want it to spin because when you're actually working your leg, it'll keep on spinning otherwise. Um, and yeah, I don't, don't put oil in that. Speaking of smooth and slippery, in she comes. The ghost who wanders, and all the wanders are not lost. Here you go, Chuck. Good, thank you. That's good. What, I've got to ask you something. I don't know what it means. Keep your pickle in a jar. What does that mean? I don't know. I just told Steve, keep your pickle in a jar. Put it in the fridge, not the food warmer. Yeah. What, whatever that is, oh. I don't know. I was told to say it, so I've said it. Now he's falling about the couch. I'll have to <laughs> ring him up and find out later. What, what do you got? What do you got? Oh, I like that one. I've got two things today. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah. Oh, you came down because you want a bit of dowel to go on. That's a bit there you go, isn't it? Yeah. yeah a bit, we, we might be able to do that. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, for the daughter-in-law. Which one? Tracy. Oh, Okay. Here you go. Has everyone heard of that? Footprints in the sand. That's lovely. Mm. Basically, 
And if you're not religious, it doesn't matter. You can replace the word Lord with friend, couldn't you? You could. Yeah, because we've all got friends, imaginary friends, real friends, whatever. Footprints in the sand. Here you go. Let's, let's, um, which one is it? I forgot. There you go. Get out of there. I might have to move back a bit so you can get the hole. The hole. Whoop. Get bits in there. That's, and so that's, that's made up of different panels. Jeez, there's eight panels there. Yep, and 12 hours, over, just over 12 hours to do it. That's a lot of work. It is a lot of it's work. It's one night I dreamt I was walking along a beach with the Lord. Many scenes from my life flashed across the sky. I've, I've had that after too many beers. In each scene I noticed footprints in the sand. Sometimes there were two sets of footprints, other times there was only one. This bothered me because I noticed that during the lowest periods of my life, when I was suffering from anguish, sorrow or defeat, I could only see one set of footprints. So the Lord, so I said to the Lord, Oi, you promised me that if you followed, if I followed you, you would walk with me always. But I've noticed that when I was having a rotten time in my life, there was only one set of footprints. Where were you? Basically, he says, in those times I was carrying you. Well, that's nice. But you could have, you could have your best friend there. You, imagine doing that for... Um, your husband or your wife or someone called yeah, Sally absolutely. or Brenda or Fred or whatever. I don't know I was on the wrong camera, so they missed all those gestations. But no, that's lovely. It is. I love those. Yeah. All right, what's the saying for the word day? <laughs> I reckon you could change that and put an R in there. Craps. Craps. <laughs> Here we go. So sensational, so sensitive, sincere, saying segment for today. I'll get out of there. Live today in all caps. And if you like, you could throw an R in there and you can spell that yourself. I had an epiphany yesterday. And it's not like a chocolate milkshake or anything. It occurred to me, because you know I've been a bit eh. <coughs> Sort of like most people, I suppose, wandering yeah. around, bumping in the walls, thinking what the hell's going on. Yep. It occurred to me, doesn't matter what's going on, I've got to still live my life. That's right. And I thought to myself, this is going to be the new normal, so get used to it. Military people can relate to this, and that's what I like them to when we used to get posted all yeah. around the place. Or if you're in, in anything that moves around, um, doctors, nurses, school teachers, Firemen, police, uh, anywhere where you moved around on a rotary ba ro rotisserie basis, <laughs> rotational basis, even people that work on mines and rigs. Uh, one day you're working in one particular to uh, place and you're doing something. The next thing, boom, uprooted, shot over somewhere else. Different people, different job, different tools, um, different way of doing things, and you just adjust. So that's what I, I kicked myself in the backside yesterday. I said, well, you just got to adjust. Did you have fun? And I did. I did. I didn't have fishnet stockings on, but it was good. <laughs> no, and I just thought, well, if it changes tomorrow, that's all right. I'll adapt. Yeah. And you've and got to. Got to do. Because I'm sitting there waiting for things to go back to the way they were. I'm going Never going to happen. I'm going to go, oh, well, when this is over, I'll get back to normal. No, this is normal. Can you imagine when you're a baby? How many new normals did you have as a baby? You Every sit day. there and everyone's looking after you all the time and then all of a sudden you don't get nice, fresh, warm milk. You get some mashed up vegetable stuffed in your mouth. No wonder you spit it out. And then everyone's picking you up and cuddling and then next minute you're crawling around and people leave you alone. And then you start running and walking and they smack you. And that's in the first 18 months of your life. That's only if you get in the cupboards. Oh, you, you tell me a kid that won't get in the cupboards. Steve, oh, you were the quickest thing I've ever seen on two legs for getting in the cupboards. He was unreal, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. There you go. All right. So he used to get in the cupboards and pull the pickles out. He did. He did. <laughs> oh, 
Mac, that boy, but he's so bigger than me. So you can get down to where they're talking. Oh, oh look at that. Oh, now she's gone all narcissistic. Um, very nice embroidery, great message. Old, oh, it was an old hymn, was it? Yes. There you go. Well, I didn't know that. Uh, okay, me, 12 young men and five nurses. Here we go. Oh, tell them to, tell them to hang on to their surgical scrubs because I'm going to try something. I was waiting for you to come in, John. I'm going to see if I can make a wine rack in under a minute. There you go. And the, the deal is I've got to start with ten fingers and end with ten fingers. Yes. There you go. Because Mum said so. Did you get my parcel, Louise? Did you? Not yet. No, we haven't got Susie hasn't got a new phone yet either. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I've got a monster. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, that's good. I wonder where my pair went. Did you come around my place and do some snow dropping? <laughs> People don't know what snow droppers are, do they? You know what a snow dropper is, don't you, Trev? <sighs> oh dear. No, well, I think if you're ever going to get beaten, John, one of you should be at least wearing fishnet stockings. Eric, I mean. So we have Steve, Tyler, Derek, Sean, Fred, Dave, Colin, Larry, Bob, Joe, Eric and Sam. Well, let's see how my memory is. Well, I think Larry, Bob, Joe and Sam are definitely new ones. And I don't think June was there and Betty wasn't there. Nancy was there, I think. That's Samantha. Samantha. Can you do that thing with your nose like yeah. Elizabeth Montgomery? Oh, that'd be so cool, wouldn't it? <coughs> Hello, people with John. Welcome to the nut house, the mad house. You smacked your kids for walking? Yeah, because no, I didn't smack them for walking. I smacked them for what they walked to. G'day, T-Bone. How are you, mate? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, look at that. Sue's all upset because no one said hi, Sue. Can you give her a couple of hi, Sue's? Oh, it's going to cost me five blooming bottles of Bailey's Irish cream to get her mood back up again. Uh, bandicooting. I've never heard of bandicooting, but it's snow dropping. <laughs> oh, dear. Scroll up, Steve. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Oh, look. No, yeah, look, look, look. He was too busy Hi. talking. Yeah, 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 too busy talking. You're too worried about if people acknowledge you or not. Did you get a coffee this morning? No. No, you didn't. You got a tea. I had a I coffee. Have a tea. Did you get your Tim Tams? Yes. I reckon you and Trevor must be related because he has to have Tim Tams as well. Absolutely. Oh, she's happy now. I oh, you prefer. James prefers to eat pickles. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go there. No. No. All right, here we go. Are you gonna? Are you gonna wait? Are you gonna see this? Hey, Sam, how are you, mate? Uh, everyone's here saying hello. All right, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You gonna watch this? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I have. I have cheated in in as much as no, no. I just just made sure that the machines were set up, but that's all I did. So we're gonna. I don't know, how are we going to do this? Can you, can you, can you be camera operator? I suppose so. That's oh, nice. Oh, it's sucking up. No, I do. I love footprints. Um, all right. Wait, wait a minute. Oh, I'm going to just turn the cameras around. So, did I tell you I fixed the tent? Yes, you did. I'm going camping in the, back, in the backyard. Yeah, me and Bob, we're going camping. Watch out. You don't get into trouble for that too. What, from you? Well, campgrounds have been shut down. Oh, no, no, this is Trailer Park. Oh, this is Trailer <laughs> This park. is Hay Trailer Park. Uh, hang on, let me get this. Whoa! We'll get this over here. <laughs> all right, you've got to be quick. You got to, what you've got to do, all right, is we'll start off with that one. With that one. There. Yeah. Then, was that that one? Yeah. Then that one. Yeah. And then I'll come back and press that one. All right. All right. We start with that one, but we'll start. Okay. Do you have a trial that run? One, that one. No, do you have a trial one. run? That one? Yeah. Change. That one. That's it. That one. Okay. Do it again. Hold it. 
<laughs> I sneaked the kiss in and you didn't see it. All right, hang on, wait a minute. Let me go and get a bit of timber. Oh, what am I on? Oh, no, we can, we can do that. We can do all three. Oh, you've lost your job. No, you got the sack. That's it, all over. All right. All right. <laughs> oh. Got a bit of pine. Ready? Oh, where's it? We got a, where's the, what's in the call it? Got to have a clock. Here we go. <laughs> oh, I hate doing stuff like this, but it's fun. What, what do we want? Stopwatch. Stopwatch? Mm. All right. Stopwatch. When I, I'll hit start yeah. and then we'll go. All right, hang on, I've got to work out what no, I've got to do. do you don't have to do not nothing. Not you don't have to do that either if you don't want to. Um, <laughs> all right, okay. You ready? I'm going to start in a minute. I've just got to turn that up. I've got, I've got to get my brain see what I'm going to do. I've got to go there, 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 here. Let me get a bottle of wine. Hello, Bob. Don't you get in the way, mate. I am going to be like Flash Gordon today. No, he wants to see you. We'll allow two seconds. Now, what I got this idea from, we were watching, we were watching MasterChef last night, weren't we? Which I normally don't like, but it's quite good at the moment. And they had to copy exactly what Gordon Ramsay was doing, and they had to finish within 10 seconds of him. And I reckon there was a bit of scalduggery going on as far as editing and directing. But this isn't. This is live and real. All right. Let's go. We're off. Oh, no, we're not. I pressed the wrong one. <laughs> you twit. All right. Now we're going. Machine on. Ah, oh, bum! Missed it by thirteen seconds. There you go. <laughs> that was because I, I, I masticated it. So I've got to beat that. The best is 50, not 58 seconds. But I'll break 15 seconds on Bob. So there you go. You want to make something really quick? That's what you can do. Mm. Remember I had to make 100 of those? Or was it 1,000? I can't remember. It was too many. Oh, one minute 10, I missed it. I'm going to tidy my sewing room. All right. Mwah. Love you much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. i see you later. I will. Now, I'm going to have another go at that later. Yeah, one minute 13. That's what I had. Oh, well, I'm putting that in the bin because it was a failure then. It's got to be under a minute. No, <laughs> I'm going to drink that instead. Oh, dear. Uh, oh, dear. All right, let's go. Hey, Earl. How are you, mate? Who is timing? What the the the, the um the, the, the thingo was? What do you call it? Now I'm blaming I'm blaming me forcing a bit because it didn't cut nicely. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I don't understand it either. But it's between my wife and my son, and I just it's got me a little bit. Mm. <clears throat> G'day, Ron. How are you? Oh no, sorry, that was who sang the song. Sorry. Mm. 
Well, there you go. I tried and I, I missed it. I've got to be able to do that again. I, <laughs> what have I got? I've got any other rubbish over here. Yeah, I, I'm going to I'm gonna try that again. I am. Let me just set that. I've got, I've got, I haven't got any more pine, unfortunately. Oh, let me just... Bum, bum, bum. Oh. Okay, here's a bit of oak. That'll do. Let me just... I don't care if it takes me all day. He's going to work, don't I? Oh, I'll be with you in a tick. I'm just trying something. Oh, dear. Dumb things we do, eh? I'll be with you in a sec. Let's try and get this forcing a bit to do the right thing. And then I'll, I'll have another crack at it. Oh dear. Now, nah, I don't think we're going to get it to work. Oh no, yeah, that might do. All right, I just get out of the way, dog. I'll give it one more go, and if I don't do it this time, I'll give it a miss. Ah, no, it's not cheating. I, what it was, it was the um, forcing a bit was jammed up with stuff. So I'll try it again. All right, I don't know how this is going because this is oak. If I don't do it, I'll give it a miss. Stopwatch. Lap. Stop. Resume. Oh, how do you... There you go. Can't even use a clock. Oh. Stopwatch. Ready. Steady. Here we go. If I don't do it this time, I'm going to give it a miss. Go. Nah, I missed it. Nah, stuff it. Jam. Blasted. Um, oh, I didn't have three cameras on. The... Uh, Thing got caught. My fence got caught. That's what happens when you're rushing it. And I'm not, not going to cut my fingers off to prove a point, but I'll give it another go later on. Anyway, what else can we do? I've got to tidy these box tops up. I'm in the hole for, for five chances. <laughs> what, you did open your mouth, John? What can I tell you? Oh, dear. For a bigger challenge, make a bottle holder in a curved laminated piece. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that in under a minute, though. You've got to wait for the glue to dry. Oh, all right. So I'm going to go through these and we'll just finish these off. 
For those that are joining and think this is just madness, what, um, what I've actually done is I'll just open the workshop up to live stream. So <laughs> apart from messing around, trying to do a... Um, a wine bottle holder in under a minute. The rest of the jobs you see me doing are actually real projects and real jobs. So I've done the boxes for this. Now all I'm doing is cleaning up the lids and I've cut all the internal pieces. Here you go, mate. There you go. I've cut all the internal lining pieces, which some of which are here. That's all Spanish cedar. And put the feet on the boxes. Where are the boxes gone? Here you go. Here's some here. Oh, I've got to bring all my cameras back now. Oh, dear. Um, that's got to have leather put in the bottom and all these just have to be lined up and cleaned up. And then I've got to fit the hinges to them. And then I've got some other inserts to go in which we made earlier on with hearts on them. And then put the finish on them and hopefully never see them again. These have all been shellacked. This is just one coat of D Wax Blonde shellac. Boom, ba -dum, boom. Now that is interesting. I've actually lost a bit of veneer on that one right there. So I'm gonna have to do something with that. So I'll put that bit to one side. That's the uh, whole idea of doing these bit by bit. And you're actually inspecting each one as you go. And that's got a, I don't know if you can see that bit. That's just got a tad of glue right there in the corner so I'll We'll knock that off with a card scraper. Just like this. You're much better off using a card scraper on that than trying to sand it out because if you try and sand it out, you're actually going to be abrading either side. This is high, that's low, you're going to make that lower. And by the time you get that out, you can go through your veneer if you're not careful. Whereas a, a cabinet scraper will just take off the high spots. Like that. Oh, I don't know, I'm, I'm exhausted after that and it didn't work. There you go. Still. You gotta have a bit of fun in life, don't you? I've got an idea I'm gonna follow up in the next couple of days. What's today? Oh, today's Friday, yeah, I can do that today. Um, in which I might still do the two hour stream, but <clears throat> I'll do two one hour ones and I'll have one up in the wood turning shed where, no Max, we don't have to be doing wood turning, but I can do various things up there. We can um, do a bit of scroll saw work, 
work on the bed because the bed pieces are so big it's actually up in another shed. Uh, we can do a bit of wood turning, maybe even fire the forge up, do a little bit of blacksmithing. And that could be an hour stream. Um, could be a two hour stream, but if we get bored there, then I can come down here and we can run a second stream down here. So you people don't have to go anywhere. You can stay exactly where you are. But it just means I run three sheds. So I run from here back down to up there and then back down to here. This is 240 I'm using here. I'm not French polishing these. I'm actually going to do an acrylic on it and that is really bad there. Don't know what to do with it. See how that's, I've actually rubbed through on the veneer up the top here. So don't know. Jury is out on that one. <clears throat> Where's that one I just, did I just, but I had a chunk missing out of, where did I put that? Shouldn't really talk and walk at the same time. Okay. That bit's got to have a bit of work on it. And this bit too. I would prefer, if I can, to remedy that somehow because that matches the veneer on the front of the other box, part of the box. So if I cut this bit of veneer out, it means I also have to cut the bit of veneer out on the bottom part of the box, which I don't particularly want to do. But there are things you can do, something like that, you'd make sure, you know, look, it doesn't fix the problem and it's good, not good craftsmanship, but you make sure that that goes where the hinges go and it's at the back of the box, so it's not the, the featured panel. But I'll tell you what, at a 12, 12 boxes, if they're the only little things I have to fix up, I'm going to be happy with that. This one had a bit of marquetry in there. This was uh, an experiment to try a different approach, but it was one of the boxes that I made, so it's going out with all the others. I'll just do this. Last one here, and then I'll, I'll have a stop and a rest and a chat. Oh, and I know what I've got to do. I've got to sand back the top. of Susie's. Um, blender bench. There you go. Whoops. I 
And while you're doing this, you're always, you're looking with your fingers and you're looking with your eyes. And when I say you're looking with your fingers, you just rub your hand over and you'll feel something, oh, that's not quite right, oh, that's got a bit of a lump on it, oh, that's not quite smooth. So even though it just looks as if you're doing one task, you're actually doing several tasks and it's got a bit of glue there as well. that in the, in the vice and get that one. Mm. Just a little dab of glue that's somehow found its way on there. It's, it's nice and clean. You gotta watch it with glue, particularly if you're gonna stain, because it will create a, a mask over the timber and when you put your stain on, you won't be able to get um, the colour to go all the way through. That, I think, I'll... What I'm going to do there... Just wet it. If I can find a bit of shellac. <coughs> So I can get the colour. You can see, you can see me. I said I was going to have a chat, didn't I? I will do that. Okay, so I just this is D wax blonde. Just putting that over there like that. Actually, it's not that bad. It's not as bad when you actually get a finish on it. Um, there's so many things you can do. Let me let me see. I might see if I can make a putty up that type of colour, which will be oak and walnut, and we'll just see if we can get close to it. But let me. I can remember. We go way back. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll go back 15 minutes, but there you go. Oh, dear. Um, ba -dum -ba -dum. Oh. <laughs> Well, you've got to make some wine holders, do you, John? If it didn't cost so much to post it to Australia, I mean, post it to Canada, I'd send you over 30 of them. Uh... I'm going to have to miss a huge chunk of um, the chat, I think, because what is it? I'll go back 10 minutes. There we go. Okay. Hi, Corey. How are you? I love your channel. Big hello from Oxen, Texas. Well, big hi. How are you? And howdy from uh, uh, Brisbane in Australia to you, Corey. I want to go on record and say that if any best friends or husbands or nurses are upset at me, it isn't my fault. I'll take responsibility. No one knows where I live, do they? <laughs> Woodlearner. G'day, mate. How are you? You can drop a name in if you like, Woodlearner, and then we all call you by your name. Oh, hello. And I'll say g'day to Earl, haven't I? Uh, see you later, Isa. No dramas, mate. We'll catch you later. Yes. I agree, Max. <laughs> Love 
it, John. Love it. Oh, dear. They all got excited thinking it was a weekend, did they? Hey, that's true, Trevor. You've got to be clever to be crazy. No, we're just, we're just chortling along. Oh, <laughs> oh, I appreciate that, Corey. Thank you. There is, and it depends. It depends on your perspective when you're analysing that, Prunella. <laughs> Whether you, it's a fine line between dumb, crazy, and smart. Oh, what was that movie? Um, a Beautiful Mind with Russell Crowe. Yeah, he was a genius, and they all thought he was a nut job. I wonder if Steve, this is Brian, I wonder if Steve ever forgets where he is sometimes when he's in out shopping and talks to himself. I tell you, what did I tell you? Was that yesterday? I don't know. <laughs> My days were all a blur. Let me have a... No, I told you about that when I, I went to buy something in the shops and I walked out without paying. Had the money and everything just walked out. I mean, there's no one there. It's crazy. Nuts. Ah, oh. uh, Max, I'm trying to piece, trying out a piece of equipment that will let me know when to panic and when not to panic. So, is it a biofeedback monitor, Max? <laughs> oh, I don't think I wobble through over that line. I think I. Um, quite regularly skate across that line, Earl. See you in a bit, James. <clears throat> I'm catching up. Louise, your parcel has just arrived. Anything else? For me or for you? Or? It's for me. We'll bring it. It could be. We'll have we'll have a, an unopening live. Oh, we'll open up Louise's too. <laughs> Pass your bed to OK Temp Tempest. We'll catch you later. Thanks, mate. I I was told you have to come again tomorrow. <laughs> No, you should get a day off, John. Invite them around to your place. That's if you want them to know where you live because they might come and expect all the furniture. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I might have a go at that thing. I'll be better set up tomorrow, maybe. G'day, Andy. Welcome to, well, as people say, you know, the nut house. But we do get woodworking done. Oh, a smartwatch. See, in my day, smartwatch told you the time. They, they're getting sophisticated now, aren't they? Okay, so what I've got here is some oak. Oh, it's starting to go a bit hard. Some oak. Where are we? Some oak and a little bit of walnut. I wanted to get close to this colour here, so I'm just going to put a little bit of walnut in there to start with. And a little bit of walnut goes a long way. And you just mix this together. Okay, we're getting close to that colour. That colour there, getting close. And then, <laughs> it's not that one. It's this one in here. So we'll bring this camera back. Oh, dear. Oh. Is that one? And we'll have a look and see what we can do. 
Okay. Now, oh, that's good. Yeah, good. I've got this stuff all over my fingers. Now, you just, can you just, because I've got to wait? Uh, well, that's good. There was also a letter telling us that they're going to do the road up down the back for the next six weeks. Oh, great. So not only are we stuck at home, we've got to put up with road noise. Yeah. Awesome. I'm happy. All right, so I've got a mixture there of, <coughs> of um, oak and walnut blended together. And we'll just leave that set for a while and then I'll sand it off. And we'll see if it looks any better. But apparently, marmons arrived. What have we got? Give me a look-see. Doesn't look like my phone. No, I know what that is. Oh, I know what that is. Should we open it? It's not unmentionable, is it, <laughs> is it Louise? Oh, we, we have it. We've got a letter open here. It's not okay. even for you, it's for me. It is, it's a towel. Louis wants a towel embroidered. I know what this is. This is it's my... For me or for you? It's for me. This is my camera hood for my new drone. Because oh, okay. the other one just didn't oh. work. <laughs> Once it fell from 40 metres and hit the ground, it just it didn't fit again. There you go. That's, that's it. Oh, that was not existent. So that was a waste of my time coming back down. It wasn't. You got to see me. You want? Oh, you got to see me again. That should be enough for you. That's. That's. I'm going to finish clean. <laughs> clean? What do you clean? What? Oh God! I thought you were doing housework for a minute. I was going to go and have a lie down, woman. You do. Oh, now tell me, why are you cleaning your sewing room up, darling? Did you know I put a photograph of your sewing room up on Instagram and Mike said it's tidier than my shed? And I told him that's because I work harder than you do. That's only because I slept before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chuck, catch you later. All right, so we'll see if this is going to do a good job or not. We'll just leave that there for a bit. And this one here, I think, and oh, I'm just going to live with that, I think. Oh, don't know. I really, I'm tempted, I really am tempted to put a light, a very light wash over that with a stain. If I can find a bit of, here we go. Here's an old box top here. If I can, uh, I'll just hit that. I just want to know how badly it's going to darken. So wait a minute. Okay. So that's that, which is pretty close. To that in appearance. So let me get some. Oh, I reckon dark oak's going to be the closest. Oh, oh, I know what we can do. We can get back onto that chair up here as soon as I finish this. That's pretty close. That is very close to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step out of my comfort zone here and stain that. Could go horribly wrong. I 
I think I think we've dodged a bullet. Okay. I might just take that up to there. There you go. That's where I'd sanded through it. But now I've got a stain on it. It looks worse in the camera than it does in real life. I'll just give it another little dab. There you go. So we've got it. So it's nice and dark all the way around. So that one's fixed. That one will leave for a little bit longer to dry. Might pull this chair up and have a look. Haven't been onto that for a while. We'll see how that's looking. So this, this is great stuff. It's called Timbermate. It's a uh, water-based stain. Comes in all, all sorts of colours. Main ones I use would be walnut, jarrah, oak, and oh, now I'm using ebony. I do use ebony a bit. But they're the main ones that I use. What's that? Drones. Where are they? Oh, they're in Victoria. There you go. Well, that's it. I, I, I might fly my drone this afternoon. Oh. Put that away. I'll leave that there. Oh, let's find some of these chair bits that we've been working on. Mm. Oh. oh, dear. This. This is going back a week, I think, this one. But I just, I just got to the stage I didn't want to do it anymore. But they all got to get done. And these, I actually will re-glue those in now. That's, that's what we can do now. We'll re-glue those. What's happening? Uh, ba -da -ba -da. Julian, good morning, good afternoon, how are ya? <clears throat> my favourite Steve video is the Blue Artist. Oh, my favourite Steve video. He's the blue artist, Jack Johnson. Steve, he's with... Oh, blues! Oh, Justin! Yeah, he's... Oh, oh, thanks, Corey. That was a long time ago. He's a great bloke. Geez, he is. And he just... doesn't matter what he's doing. I, I reckon music is just through his body the entire time. And it was just a chance meeting. I happened to meet him and said, what are you doing tomorrow? He said, oh, not much. I said, you want to be on a TV show? This is Justin Johnson. He said, oh, yeah, right, eh? So we said, all right, be at the studio at, at 10 o'clock. Nothing he rocks in about quarter past 11. You know, it's cool. He's so laid back, beautiful man. And Nikki, his wife, uh, she's, she's lovely too. Oh, dear, oh, dear. How do you hide the faults when all sides of the box has them? Um, well, it depends what the fault is. You, uh, you just work with it on a fault-by-fault -fault basis. In, in that case, this one here, we mixed up some coloured um, bog, or putty, sorry, and put it in there. The other one, we used stain on it. Other times, I might cut a slither of timber and insert that. Uh, if it's that bad, yeah, I'll start again. So it all depends on any particular uh, problem. So if you've got dovetails and you've made a box with dovetails and there's big gaps in there, there's some terrible things I can show you how to fix it. No one will know, but they, they border on butchery, but the end result is they look really good. <clears throat> I like that, Brian. Don't hide them. Tell them it's style. Oh, dear. 
Oh, it's more like what didn't we do? Oh, I'm, I'm down through that lot. Is the stream over? Negrini, no! <laughs> it's still here. There we go. Oh, you, he might want a chest of drawers as well. John, you never know. See you, Julian. I oh, know that feeling. Yeah, I get out of bed and I'm ready for a nap once I've got out of bed. Oh, thanks, Andy. I'll pass that on to her. Oh, well, that's, you just tell them something special happened, John, but don't tell them what it was. Yeah, if it's a breathing problem and it's a serious one, go get it checked out for goodness sake. Oh. MC! Mate, where have you been? Have you been on six months vacation? Yeah. <laughs> You've been in the kitchen instead of the office. Good to have you back, Mario. I hope you're feeling well. Just got home from work, 8 a.m. Shout, ready for bed. But have window trims to assemble for my camp. I like the idea of going camping. I'm looking forward to that. Did you see my progress? No, I didn't, Wes. I did not, but I'll check it out when I go up. G'day, Ange, if you're with Wes. And if not, why not? Oh, OK. So, I've forgotten what we... Oh, that's right, we had to put a big block in here. Well, we can cut that bit back. I'll just put this to one side and we'll have a look at that before we close. We will... Uh, now I'll do this on the bandsaw, just cut that roughly to shape, then we use a spoke shave. Um, no, I won't, I'll use the block plane. What I want, this one here. This leg, for those of you that weren't at the beginning, was completely broken and there was no timber inside for the dowels to fit into. So I put a new block in there. Now I'm just cutting just above that chair. So now what I can do is pop it in the vise. Here. I'll just move these boxes out of the way. Oh dear. Okay. Whoops. I want to, if I can. I want to not go in and actually cut past. I don't want to get into the finish here. So it's just going to be very, very light plane. Very light plane. 
So I've got a, I should have a closed mouth on that almost. Very, very fine mouth and just a little bit of blade. And I'll come in this way because I don't really want to get into that finish. There's a bit of glue there, we'll just get that off. All right, so that's taken down and we can put our new dowels in there. And when it comes to doing the dowels, it's not just a straight dowel in because, where are we, where's a, is there another bit down there? There is another bit down there. Jeez, I'm pleased about that. I'm going to find out which is the front and which is the back. Um, it's got to be the front. So this one we can put in. And if you look at the angle of the chair there, when that goes in, this side rail is at an angle. So when we actually do, drill the dowel holes, they're not straight because if we drill, if we drill straight dowel holes there, it's not going to meet. There's going to be a big gap on the side. This actually goes on this side, and it depends. There's a slight kink. Oh, okay, that, that, we could be all right on that. Um, where's the other? Oh, that's the other side bit there. Okay. Slippery stuff. No, we're still going to have to go in at an angle. I thought sometimes they drill these holes here at an angle. So then you can drill straight back in the chair. But the risk you run is if you drill straight, or do you? No. No, if you did that, that would work all right. I'm just talking to myself here. It's all right. So they're going to be, they're straight. So that, they come out there, but the chair actually goes in at an angle. So when I drill these holes, I don't drill it straight down like that. I've got to drill them at an angle. So we'll work that out when we come to put that final bit in. But all this muck here, I'm going to have to clean up all that glue and everything. That's going to create problems when we go to put it back together. <sighs> and this one and this one can go together. That's all right. So that's no dramas. So what we might do is... Have a look at this. This has to come apart as well. And if you look at that, that's loose. This is the chair back. And that's pretty munched out. But what I want to do is take this out and we'll see if we can just put, instead of cleaning all that out, if we can just put a couple of little bits of timber in there, we've then got the same angle and placement of the dowels. So it's going to be easier to put together. Whereas the other one, we've got to actually figure that out. And it's a bit of a, a hit and miss to get it right. But I'm sure we can do it. Let me just get a bit of scrap timber. And we'll just knock this out. To get the dowels out, the best way is to shock it out. Don't go smash like that on the bare timber because you'll bruise it. If you put a bit of timber on there and then you use that and sharp, not haphazard ones, but sharp hits to break the glue. We're going to put them in anyway. And then the other side. Take this one out because it's going to come out anyway. Here we go. 
And that one might as well come off too. We'll get that one off in a minute. So it's just a sharp like that. Okay, that's been broken, but that doesn't matter. We can fix that. And this bit here is all shattered. So you just get a chisel, prise that off, try and keep it in one piece if you can. This is the joy of working with chairs. Okay, nearly got it. There we go. Get that piece. And this piece here that's hanging in there. I don't really, or will I? Yeah, I'll pull it out. <laughs> Try not to bend those fibers because when I go back in, I want all those fibers to line up. And that one will break. So we'll pull that up. Okay. Get a bit of glue. The trick is try not to disturb the fibers that have broken out because then we can get it, everything to line up quite nicely. And what just happened then is going to happen in about at least six out of ten chairs that you repair, especially if they've been repaired before, because I think someone before said, oh, just epoxy. Yeah, great. If they've used epoxy, that's really strong glue. And therefore, and they actually tell you, the timber will break before the glue gives way. That is another reason I love hide glue, because I can heat that up. If that was hide glue, all I would have to do was put a bit of heat into that and it would just separate. It would be messy, it'd be like chewing gum, but it would separate. Yeah, just line that up best you can. Slide it in. And up. A bit of a tap. I guess this is one of the advantages of seeing stuff live. These things happen, you can't you can't predict it. If you wanted to, you could edit it out, but why? I mean, it is part of the job. It's, it's, it's life. It's what happens. There's no point panicking about it or, you know, getting a sick feeling or something. You've, you've just got to keep on going. And you can most likely tell I've done this a couple of times before. And that's the great thing. If you're fixing something that's broken... Well, it's already broken, so don't panic. Okay, now. I'll work this out. It's just like a jigsaw puzzle, only with sticky fingers. up a bit so we can get it all all in together there we go what 
what's holding that. There's a big lump of glue there that we don't really want. A bit of old glue. There we go. That's just the only little bit this bit. I'm just trying to get it to go back into the way it came out. So that's good like that, that's good like that. Might just give it a little bit of a encouragement. Oh, hang on. There we go. Just one little daggy bit. There we go. Um, what do I want? I want a dolly. Well, I saw one around here before. Where did I see it? Might have been, might have been in the other sheds, all right. This will do. This will do. Clamp that up nice and tight. Could use a clamp, but we stick it in the vice, doesn't matter. And the reason I use that paper is so the glue won't stick to the uh, cord block that I'm using. And there we go, that one's done. These we can actually glue in to this side. Something else fell down here before. Oh, dear, dear, dear. So that goes in there. Now I don't know if these are all the same or if they're different sizes or what. They appear to be the same. Me 
confused now. No. That goes in there like that. Then this one's got to go in there. That one's got to go there. there. It's got to go there. And the reason I know that's got to go there is it doesn't have a dowel hole in it and the rest of them do. So, that one can go there and that one will go there. I just had a rethink on this. I was going to glue these in but I think I'll actually wait until I've got the other side done and then we can glue them in together and we'll glue that back piece in as well. So that way they're all going to line up. Uh, but, 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 we can clean this end off and we can glue this in to there, so that's a start. And I'll take all that glue and rubbish off of there where that glue block is. First of all, I'm going to clean this one up. For that, I, I actually am going to use a sharp chisel. I'm not using my Swiss army chisels. <laughs> That's even been, they've tried to fill the, the gaps up with matchsticks. Which I suppose is one way of fixing something. So you can see the match stick in there. But if you clean this up, really nice sharp chisel helps so much. Yeah, okay, you, you are scraping, but if you're using a blunt one, you're going to be going everywhere. See how they glue there? There's tons of it. There we go. missing a dowel in the middle. The water trick doesn't work if there's varnish on the job, just in case you're wondering why I haven't put water on there.
Yeah, I think I'll get a card scrape and see if I can get the rest of it off. See it coming off there? Because your glue's got a much better chance of working better if it's actually on timber, not glue on another glue. And yeah, you could sand that. Number one, you won't get it f as flat as a scraper will. And number two, that glue is gonna clog your sandpaper so much. There you go. Take that off. That is not too bad, I think. So you don't bust out too. Always try when you come to an edge, instead of going this way out that way, you're going to break that off. Start at the edge and come in. That way you're going to keep the integrity of the edges as best you can. See, I personally don't like the length of those dowels going in. I don't think it's far enough. This other one I might put a, a longer one in. But we'll see, we'll see. Um, we might, yeah, we might do that. I'll clean this one off too, I think. If I can get it. Let's get this glue off of here. Whoops, haven't got much to hold that on with. There we go. Dowel still in there. Always a... Just knock that free. See that bit there? There's a bit of old dowel that broke off when we pulled it apart. Let's clean that out. You've got a little piece here that's missing, so you can if you like. We might as well do it. Um, just put a little piece in there that we can plane off and drill out later. I don't know how big that is. It doesn't matter what you put in there. You don't have to put the same, same timber in any... Any bit will do, I'm just seeing if I've got any thin bits. This might even, there you go, that'll do the trick. So we'll just cut that off. Do that on the bandsaw. Ah, I dropped, I dropped it down the hole. Make, make one a little bit bigger. There we go. Let's 
So we'll just glue that into there. Doesn't have to be super neat. You can have a cork block the other side if you so desired. There's a decent clamp. No, that's not gonna. It might make it. <clears throat> okay, so all I've done where that's got a lot missing, I'm putting this in grain orientation, saying different species of timber, it doesn't really matter. I've got the cork, cork, cork side going underneath the leg, so it's not going to damage it. And then I'm just going to put this top bit straight on that little block. If we're going to make it, are we going to make it? There you go. Get out of here. There you go. Put that over the top and just tighten that up. It's a lot easier said than done, isn't it? There we go. So the cork block is going to mould to the shape of the leg. I've got a solid edge, solid um, piece of ply on the other side of the cork. So that's it. And we'll leave that so we can't put that leg together. But tomorrow, what we'll do is take this off. We can plane that a little bit flat. And then we'll just put a drill in there and it'll just clean that hole out and just give us a little bit more meat for the dowel to hang on to. Let's have a look how we went here with this box. Um, actually, we'll clean this one up whilst I'm in a, whilst I'm in a cleany type mood. Uh, let's go. That one's okay. It hasn't got too much damage on it. But this is the unfortunate thing with a lot of repairs. People use the glue not just as glue. They use it as wood fill. They use it as packing. And goodness knows what else. And when someone else comes along to try and fix it, they got heaps more work to do. So that's done, that's done. That's ready to go. These we have to work on. Which one's that? Is that a front or a back? I think that's a back. All right. Should we clean these up? I don't know. Let me have a look. Which way is that going? Go on. No way, so that's not that one. Hello, whoever that is. No, we'll clean that one up later. Is that Bob? Is that Bob? Here you go, mate. I want to see how this turned out. Let's, let's do that. What do I want, mate? Bit of 240. So, got a bit of 240 there. Very, very lightly rubbing that. Um, putty off. Oh dear. 
Well, we'll put it. We'll put a bit on, and we'll have a look. See. So all this stuff, you, you don't know if it's going to work or not. You just got to give it a give it a try. I tell you what, you wouldn't stop a galloping horse to to look at that. We've got a little bit too much walnut in there. But if I'd sort of spread that out with a bit more oak, you might not have noticed it. But we've got the colour and everything else right. Now I reckon you could almost leave that. It'll look like a blemish anyway. So it definitely, it looks better than having a piece of veneer missing. So I'm, I'm happy with that. So that's a couple of ways to fix things. I don't know if we did anything today, did we? I think we fixed a few things and whatever. And I, fa I failed at beating my record. So oh, we'll give it another try some other time down the track. We'll see if I can do it better. I'll get the right force in a bit. I'll show you what I mean. The force in a bit I had compared to the force in a bit I would have preferred to use. That, that's the one I should have used, yes, tis was. Where is it? I threw it in the bin, didn't I? Did it go in the bin? Might have missed the bin. No, it definitely went in the bin, but I can't find it. What hope is there? I can't even find stuff I throw in the bin. So the... Um, that was the force in the bit I had in the drill press. And that's why I reckon I lost five seconds. Easy. That was the drill press bit I really wanted, which gives me a much smoother and quicker cut. So that's... <laughs> if I'm making excuses, that's an excuse I'm making. But quite frankly, I don't care. It was a bit of fun and there you go. Didn't work. Who cares? Oh... Let me go, go back 10 minutes. Six knots, did you just slide in? How are you, Ben? Oh dear. Where is Woodford? It's just up the road from me. Steve's answer to getting the wife to do more is by basically doing a terrible job at stuff like this. I did. As soon as we got married, I said, I'll do the dishes, and I smashed two plates. She said, you're never doing that again. See? Thinking about it. Roscoe, good day, mate. Oh, you're a gay man, Jeff. I, don't, I think I'd wear the, box of, wear the box of cleaning stuff if I tried that. Uh, okay, ten minutes ago. Uh, oh. But I'm uh, new washing machines that are tangle free. I don't think I've got one of those. I'll, I'll have to check it. I'll, I'll ask the grandkids because they're the ones that hang the washing out. Oh, yeah, I know. It sounded like the coppers, actually. Someone's most likely walking too close to someone else. Well, there was, there was a fight over the last bar of chocolate. Oh, you're talking about a, a um, Woodford prison. I thought you meant where the Woodford Festival is. <laughs> oh, Bob, Bob, Bob's there for a rinse. Prunella, put it on the floor. Bob will clean it up. Mm. 
chair wardrobe. What's that? From the chair to the wardrobe. I like that floor drape. I like that. That's good. Oh, Susie. Susie did that to our eldest bloke, Jono. He was he was only about two. And you know the old mangles? And the, they had the washing tub underneath. He used to boil the mangle on top. John. It was a, an electric one. And John, I put his little hand in the mangle and it went through up to the forearm. And so for Sue to get it out, she put it in reverse <laughs> and ran it out instead of hitting the quick release. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, twin tubs. Everyone had a twin tub. No, Julian. So I came up with the same question for Steve while putting it. What was the question? <laughs> Just, you get looked after, Trevor. No, um, Anthony, he most likely is still asleep. He might have ex extended himself yesterday by doing all that work. Oh, last night, truly, kids, I'll tell you. I, um, we went and put them to bed and, you know, usual thing, love you and give them hugs and did you have a good day and, oh, you did really well here and this was good. And I, I said to Anthony, you did really good today, mate. Are you happy with what, what, you know, what you made? And, oh, no, not really. I said, well, why not? He said, oh, well, the, the screw thread, he made a scythe yesterday with a swivel head on it and it's on a pivot but it's got um, a screw you put through with a wing nut if you want to change the positions. He said, well, really, he said, it takes so long to undo the screw that if I was in a real fight with it and I had to change the position of the head, I'd have to undo the screw and I'd be dead. I said, mate, you'd be dead anyway because it's a plywood scythe. If someone had a real one, they'd lob your head and your hands off. So he's come up, he wants to make a quick release. And I've, I said quickly, all you need is a spring-loaded toggle that you'd have a a wire coming down here and you'd pull it, the toggle would come out, the blade would drop, you flick it, let go of the toggle and it would find the next hole that you wanted. Oh, good, can we do that? I said, no, you're going to have to work that one out because as soon as I do that, then it'll be, oh, no, the stick's too long. I want one that's kind of concertina that I can wind in. and Oh, but no, he did. He enjoyed it. And thanks for everyone for making him feel so welcome. I'd like to get him down here to do some more stuff. Ah. Oh. Well, well, that's all right, because that gives me time to think about the answer if I don't know the question, Roscoe. Hmm. Oh, Mungle's down there. He's, he's, he sort of senses there could be lunch coming off. I've just looked at the clock. So he's still here. He's still here. He's faithful. I've just looked at the clock, so it sounds like I should be winding up soon. Right next to my chisels and push sticks, I actually moved my strop, looking for my strop today. Oh, okay. What happened at 11.34? You got me looking now, I've got to go back. Eleven thirty-four. <laughs> oh, nice one, Trevor. Mate, I, I would I would make that before seventy, quite quite comfortably. Uh, now thanks, Michael. There was something I was gonna ask. Oh yes, your comment about Susan's workshop being tidier than mine. That's because I work harder. That's it. I haven't got time to be messing around doing stuff like that. I mean, she takes time off and goes to the kitchen and cooks meals. And then she makes beds and she folds clothes. She's not down there doing the same job all the time. How dare she? <laughs> I'm going to get thumped. Oh, dear. 
Uh, can I get a get around the house? Oh, there you go. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Uh, tell John we'll be here for him. That's it. All right, well, that's it. I have... I have overstayed by four minutes. No, oh, gee, seven minutes. Oh, I'm pushing the envelope. She's going to be down here soon. So I've got an alarm clock here because as soon as Bob moves, I know she's on the way. Anyway, look, um, yeah, so you witnessed a failed attempt at me trying to do something clever that didn't work. Doesn't matter. It was fun. Um, what happens in real terms when you're restoring a chair? Things break. Don't panic about it. Just take it easy and... You know you can fix it. It was broken when you got it in the first place. Um, uh, cabinet's coming along good. Did a couple of fixes on how to fix up blemishes in, in boxes. So when something happens when you're doing a job, you'll notice that if I'm doing a job and I slip with the router or I slip with the saw, I don't stop. I just go, oh, well, I'll fix that later on. And just keep on, keep your focus on what you're doing and then come back because jumping up and down and cussing and carrying on about it. It's not going to change what you've just done. So later on, you just have a look at, oh, how can I fix that? And there are ways of fixing it. And the absolute worst, if you can't fix it, you do it again. Easy peasy. So anyway, this is Steve pulling the shed door down, and I love that poem, Susie Had a Footprints. Couldn't agree more, and uh, if that's the case, I'll say he's got his hands full with a lot of people at the moment. <sighs> so this is Steve pulling the shed door down, saying, remember to keep it sharp. More importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself. Definitely look after yourself. Be kind to each other. Exercise restraint before you answer, especially in domestic close quarters situations. And I look forward to having your company in the workshop, at the workbench. 10 o'clock I'm going to stream tomorrow. Blow this quarter to 10. So it'll be 10 to 12 tomorrow here at the workbench, at the, be at the bench, have no idea what I'm doing at the moment, but I know it'll be woodwork and I've got stuff to finish and I'll see about doing those split um, workshops. So might be an hour in the wood turning shed or smithing area and an hour down here. We'll see how we go. But till then, God bless. Look after yourself. Please look after yourself. I appreciate everyone. If you haven't done so before, please hit the subscribe button and the notifications when you know that I'm on. And if you've got any questions, either email me at admin at woodworkingmasterclass.com.au, message me on Facebook at Facebook, Steve Hay, or save it up and ask me in the chat room. Until then, thank you, everybody. Heart out energy to you. Love and light. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.